So, I made a video in like December 2016 and it was a guide on 5 different ways to make bells in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Of course, I enlisted that video since I recorded it when I was only 11 years old, way too young at the time. The shaky camera and the high-pitched voice you can barely understand in the video was something that wouldn't have been very useful for people playing New Leaf at the time. Dear, <clears throat> if you don't see it get higher on Wednesday morning, saw your turn and say you don't get a very bad profit. Because you might not know at first. And granted, yes, my voice is very low in this video. 16 year old stuff. But now, it's time to remaster that video, this time in New Horizons. Longer, better, and more straightforward, especially since I have brand new recording equipment. So, without further ado, let's get started. First part of this guide will be dedicated to those who are just starting out their island for the first time. Things that would be useful to know during the first week of your stay. The second part will be dedicated to more advanced ways of making money. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of bells for this. After all, you'll have to pay quite a lot of money to pay off Tom Nook completely. And, oh, it's not much. It's only about... Yeah, forget I said that. But still, don't worry. We'll start off this guide slow for those who are starting off their island. Then we'll move on to the big stuff. Trust me, it'll take a lot less time than you think. I'll go over a total of 15 ways, 11 of those being for newbies, and the other 4 being ways to make hundreds of thousands of bells. When you're starting out your island, you'll have multiple fruit trees laid out around the island. This is known as your native fruit, and they'll be one of these 5 fruits. Cherries, apples, peaches, pears, and oranges. Whatever native fruit it is, the fruit will always sell for 100 bells each. Fortunately, your fruit trees grow back another three pieces in two days, where you can sell them again. But, if you want to plant more fruit trees, you can use the fruit you've obtained from the trees you've shaken and plant them in the middle of an open 3x3 three three radius. That way, when the new fruit tree grows after four days of waiting, you'll be able to sell more fruit for more bells. If you use Nintendo Switch Online, then the day after you arrive at your island for the first time, you should speak to a friend and see if you both have the same native fruit or not. Visit their island and take some of their native fruit, with permission of course. Non-native fruit sells for 500 bells each, much more than your regular native fruit. But be sure not to sell it just yet. It's best to plant each of the non-native fruits you've collected so you don't have to return to your friend's island to get more. If you want a bit more money on the first day, consider picking up the seashells that lie near your beach and selling those. They all stack up in your inventory, which makes things very easy. Here's a list of the different shells you can find. Pause if you want to keep looking. You can see that the best one is the giant clam, which sells for 900 bells. Seashells will reappear every day, so make sure to utilize them, especially on the second day when you're able to craft the vaulting pole to unlock other areas of the island with more seashells. There are many different things hidden up your trees that you wouldn't expect to be up there, but in those trees contain things that can net you some bells. Listen to this part carefully before you attempt anything though. One of the things you can find hidden up in your trees are bells themselves, 100 of them to be exact. You'll be getting money without actually having to sell anything. Next, you'll find random pieces of furniture up in the trees. Every day, two trees will hold any random piece of furniture in the game. Depending on the furniture, those can sell for a decent amount as well. Don't shake fruit trees that were shaken the day before, nothing falls out. Now, this is where that word cautiously comes into place, so pay attention. When you shake a tree, there's a chance that a wasp nest will fall out. If you don't know what to do, you'll likely end up getting stung and will have to buy medicine from the nooklings. Don't worry though, there's an easy fix that will not only prevent that, but it will also get you a decent amount of bells. First, you want to hold your bug net out while shaking trees and make sure you shake them in the position shown here. Make sure there aren't any items surrounding the tree. If a wasp nest falls out, wait for the shock reaction to disappear, then press A and you'll catch them very easily. Wasps sell for 2,500 bells, and if you pick up the wasp nest that fell down, that's another 300 bells. There are a total of 5 trees that hold wasps on your island per day, so if you catch each wasp and pick up each wasp nest, you'll get yourself 14,000 bells every day. Not only that, you'll earn a Nook Miles achievement for catching all 5 wasps in one day. 
A rather notable way to make money is to catch bugs and fish. A flimsy fishing rod and a flimsy net can both be crafted for 5 tree branches each, which you can easily obtain by shaking trees multiple times. There's no limit to how many appear, just be cautious of what was mentioned in the last section about wasps. Many different bugs and fish appear only during specific months of the year at specific times. For example, let's talk about the snapping turtle. It can only be caught in between the months of April and September in the northern hemisphere, or in between October over in March in the Southern Hemisphere, in between the hours of 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. This guy sells for 5,000 bells. Other fish and bugs you may find will either sell for more or less. In my opinion, the best season to catch bugs and fish would definitely be summer. Now, before I end this section, I'll give you a tip for fishing that'll make fishing a lot easier. When it comes to the five senses, hearing is much better than sight. When a fish notices your bobber, close your eyes and keep your ears open to hear if the fish either nibbles the bait or bites down. I find that doing this allows me to catch fish 98% of the time, but looking at the fish directly to see what it does allows me to catch it only 80% of the time. Oh, actually, why don't we test that right now? I'm about to play a clip of me catching a fish. When the fish bites down, tap something nearby. It can be your phone screen, your desk, a book you're reading, anything works. Starting now. Well, how did you do? If you tapped it most 1.5 seconds after the fish bit down, then congratulations, you caught this black bass. It's important to note that different fish have different reaction times, and the higher the price of a fish, the shorter time you have to react. For example, many sharks in the game can only be caught if your reaction time is less than half a second. Let's try another one if you accidentally tap too soon or too late, starting now. Do this a few more times and you'll master fishing. This method will get you a decent amount of bells as well. In order to fulfill this, you'll need a shovel with a good amount of durability. Flimsy shovels have 40 total uses and regular shovels have 100 total uses. Now what you want to do is go around your island and locate some rocks. Then dig holes behind you like so. That way, when you hit the rock, you won't get knocked back too far away from it. If the rock doesn't spew out any money, you can either move on or feel free to continue to hit it for materials. Keep doing this with every rock you can find until you locate the money rock. Make sure you hit it as fast as you can, otherwise the last bit of money may not come out. Also, a side note, make sure you aren't doing this around any other villagers. Trust me, I've seen it on so many clips where people accidentally press A to talk to a villager instead of hitting the rock and it's a huge loss. You'll find one money rock in your town every day. Make sure to utilize it. When the time comes and you've unlocked Nook's Cranny, you'll notice that on the sign outside, a random item or creature is listed as a hot item. You can also go inside and ask them what the hot item is. Now, I have the upgraded Nook's Cranny, which gives two hot items per day. But if you have only the first version, you'll only get one per day. These so-called hot items are items that sell for twice as much as they normally would. So, let's say that you crafted a Tiki Torch. That normally sells for 650 bells. But, if it's listed as the hot item at Nook's Cranny, it sells for 1,300 bells. Make sure to check that sign outside of the shop every day, because at some point, you could find out that an item that doesn't require many materials to craft is the hot item of the day. If the challenge of bug catching and or fishing is just too much, consider an alternative. Deep Sea Diving. When you unlock special Nook items at the Nook machine inside Resident Services, you'll notice that one of those items is the Nook Inc. Wetsuit. If you have enough miles, definitely buy that. It'll come in the mail the next day. All you have to do after that is put it on, clear your inventory, and take a dive in the ocean waters. In my experience, it took me about 25 to 30 minutes to fill my 40 pocket spaces with sea creatures. Fun fact, the two sea creatures that sell for the lowest price, the sea star and the sea cucumber, both each worth 500 bells. That means if you have 40 pocket spaces unlocked, you could get at least 20,000 bells in one long but short deep sea diving trip. 
Now, you won't run into many, but there are some sea creatures that swim away from you at the same speed you swim towards them. If that happens, steer away from them, but push them perpendicular to the diving border. Sometimes you might be unable to catch them doing this, but that's okay. Keep trying, and if you still can't catch them, push them to a corner. Then you're guaranteed. There's no time limits catching them. They don't disappear or go over the border like they used to in New Leaf. Similarly to Animal Crossing GameCube, you'll find a spot on your island that glows. This hole contains a thousand bells, so make sure you dig it up. But, don't close it just yet. You need to do one more thing to get even more bells. Take 10,000 bells or less from your inventory and plant it, and you'll notice it'll turn into a sapling. You can dig up the sapling with a shovel and plant it somewhere else too. After four days, you'll have three times the amount of money that you planted originally. Keep in mind, if you plant more than 10,000 bells in the golden hole, you aren't guaranteed to grow a money tree. For example, planting 99,000 bells will be more likely to grow into a regular tree rather than a money tree. Make sure you spend your bells wisely with this one. If you're in need of some money rather quickly and you have some Nook Miles saved up, this is definitely for you. Check out the Nook Machine in Residential Services and you'll notice that you can get a Bell Voucher in exchange for 500 Nook Miles. A Bell Voucher sells for 3,000 Bells, making it quite profitable. But I suggest not doing this method unless you absolutely have to, because Nook Miles tend to be more important than Bells at times. Every day on your island, four different fossils will appear underground. When you dig them up with a shovel, you'll be able to show them to Blathers and have them identified if you have the museum unlocked. The best thing to do is donate them, but if you're not feeling up for that, or if you have a duplicate fossil, that's where selling comes in. They actually sell for a lot more than you may think, in the thousands. Don't try selling the fossils unidentified though. They may look interesting, but they sure won't be when you see how much they sell for. So we've already gone over fruit trees, but now it's time to shove that aside and move on to pumpkins. When Leaf is on your island, you can buy pumpkins from him for a small price. Buy as many as you can, they'll come in use later. It takes 3 days for them to grow, but make sure you also water these pumpkins every day. This way, the pumpkin plant will yield a maximum of 3 pumpkins. If you don't water them, the plant only yields 1. Once you pick them, you can start the cycle over again by watering them every day and waiting another two days for them to grow back. Each of these pumpkins sell for 350 bells each, so let's say you planted 50 pumpkin plants and watered them every day. You would end up with 150 pumpkins total. When you times 350 with 150, that gets you 52,500 bells total. That's quite a lot making pumpkin farming quite a decent method for making bells. Okay, so that's about all I'll be talking about in terms of your first week on the island. Now it's time for what most of you have been waiting for, more extreme ways to make bells. Keep in mind, most of these involve traveling to Nook Miles Islands, so make sure you have those saved up. Without further ado, let's start this next unit. You've likely heard of the rare tarantula islands and scorpion islands online. Each only spawn the creepy crawlies we all fear seeing. However, these islands are, as I mentioned, rare. You'll probably find one of these islands only in between every 50 to 100 islands you visit. And you're likely not up for spending a bunch of nook miles and hours trying to find one. Luckily, you can turn any island you want into a tarantula or a scorpion island. If you're in between May and October in the Northern Hemisphere, or in between November and April in the Southern Hemisphere, you'll be looking for scorpions. If you're in between November and April in the Northern Hemisphere, or in between May and October in the Southern Hemisphere, you'll be looking for tarantulas. Doesn't matter what you catch, they both each sell for 8,000 bells, just for one of them. In order for this to work, you'll need to be in between the times 7pm and 4am. Here are the items you'll need to be ready. A regular net, a customization kit, a temporary shovel, two temporary axes, four pieces of fruit, and a Nook Miles ticket. If we're not looking for the rare tarantula scorpion island itself, we're looking for the bamboo island. This island, without the bamboo, is basically a flat island with no rivers nor cliffs. Other mystery islands would be rather tedious to deal with, and it would take you longer to fill your pockets up with the creepy crawlies.
Talk to Orville and have Wilbur take you to a mystery island. If it's not the Bamboo Island, or it's not one of the rare Tarantula or Scorpion Islands, leave, grab another Nook Miles ticket, and try again. Keep doing this until you find the island you're looking for. If you found the rare Tarantula slash Scorpion Island, congrats! It should be very easy to keep going from there. For those who found the Bamboo Island, here's what you'll be doing. You'll first start off by cutting down every bamboo tree and every coconut tree on the island. The reason two axes are required is because you'll use up all the durability on one axe, so you'll need to use the other to finish the job. Once you've cut down everything, use the temporary shovel to dig out the stumps so no stump bugs spawn in, and fill in the holes. Once that's done, pick up the bamboo and wood so you can see more clearly, then drop the items somewhere on the beach, like I am here. Also, drop the temporary shovel and the temporary axe because you don't need them anymore. Next, pluck all the weeds so your view isn't too obstructed, and once you've done that, pluck all the flowers too. Don't dig them up, because they'll just take up space in your inventory. Drop those items off nearby the beaches as well. After that, eat the fruit you brought and use the energy to break the rocks on the island, so no pill bugs or centipedes appear. Finally, make an L-shaped trap on each bottom hand side of the mystery island, which I'll show you how it works in a moment. After that, you're all set! Run around and scare away anything that isn't what you're looking for. Wharf roaches, hermit crabs, tiger beetles, get them all out. Make absolutely sure you don't run with your net out either. Sometimes you'll end up with bugs you can't simply scare away, such as mosquitoes, and it's up to you whether you want to ignore them or catch them, because a maximum of four bugs can spawn in the island at a time, so they'll be taking up space. Once you've located a scorpion or tarantula, equip the net and run close to it, but not into it so you can get its attention safely. It'll start chasing you, and that's when you make a beeline for the L-shaped trap I previously told you to make, and get behind it. The tarantula or scorpion will start running in circles, and you'll be able to successfully catch it without getting bitten. Well done! <laughs> Once you reach about 25 total bug catches on the island, use the customization kit on your net so the durability is restored and you can use it as if it's brand new. In about an hour to an hour and a half, you'll find yourself rich with these bugs. Now it's time to head back to your island and sell them. If you caught 39 of them, you'll get a total of 312,000 bells. One thing I do suggest more though is waiting until Flick arrives at your island at some point. He buys insects for 50% more than the Nooklings do. Meaning, if you caught 39 tarantulas or scorpions, you'll instead get 468,000 bells instead of just 312,000. Let's do something similar to the scorpion and tarantula method, except it's a bit faster to get done, plus it's bound to yield you more money. The only issue is, you can only try this method 2 months out of 12, July and August in the Northern Hemisphere, but if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, January and February. Again, you'll be searching for the Bamboo Island, as it's your best bet. The best times to try out this method are in between 11pm and 4am. Here are the items you'll need to be ready. A regular net, a customization kit, a temporary shovel, two temporary axes, four pieces of fruit, four coconut trees, and a Nook Miles ticket. You can get the four coconut trees from your own island, or from another Nook Miles Island, just know that you won't be able to take them back home. Once you're on the Bamboo Island, you'll basically be doing the exact same thing you did with the Scorpion and Tarantula method, except with a few changes. You'll cut down all the bamboo and remove their stumps, but this time you're not going to cut down the coconut trees. Remove all the weeds and eat the fruit you brought to break the rocks. Drop your leftover axe and your shovel, as well as the items dropped from modifying the island, anywhere on the island. Take the four palm trees you brought, and place them anywhere on the beach, but somewhere where it won't cause difficulty catching any bugs that appear. That's all you have to do. Before I tell you what you're specifically looking for, chances are that if you didn't time travel, you wouldn't want to be spending too much time late in the night catching beetles. If you're tired, don't close out of the game. Put your switch in sleep mode, on a charger, and wait until morning. The cool thing about Nook Miles Islands is that spawn times are locked to whatever time you got there. For example, if you went to a mystery island at 10.30pm, caught some bugs, went to sleep, and woke up at 8.30am, you would find the same exact bugs as if it were still 10.30pm. Now, here are the bugs you're looking for specifically. If you want a TLDR or Too Long Didn't Read version, skip to this part and I'll show a list on screen because these explanations will be long. 
First up is the Scarab Beetle, which sells for 10,000 bells. You can tell its difference from the other bugs because it shines golden in the night. Next, you're looking for the Goliath Beetle, which sells for 8,000 bells. You'll be able to tell this beetle's difference from other bugs by the red it has on its bottom half. Next, you're looking for the Giant Stag, which sells for 10,000 bells. You'll be able to tell the difference from other stag beetles by how slowly it moves its jaws. Here's a comparison between the Miami Stag and the Giant Stag. Next up, you're looking for the Cyclomatus Stag. It sells for 8,000 bells. You'll be able to tell the difference from other bugs by the size of its jaws, plus the brownish colors. They're long and thin, just like this. Next, you're looking for the Horned Atlas. This beetle sells for 8,000 bells. Tell the difference between other beetles, Note that it has three long horns instead of only one. Next, you're looking for the horned elephant, which sells for 8,000 bells. It's much bigger than other bugs, plus it's a more golden color. Now, let's move on to the rarest bugs you'll find. Starting us off is the horned Hercules, worth a whopping 12,000 bells. Top half is brown, and the bottom half is golden. Next, you're looking for the giraffe stag. This sells for 12,000 bells, and you can tell the difference from other stag beetles based on its jaw size. Yes, it's similar to the Cyclomatus, but its color is all black and the jaws are much thicker than those of the Cyclomatus. And finally, to end this off, you'll be looking for the Golden Stag. This sells for 12,000 bells, and the way you can tell the difference between other stag beetles is that it is the only stag beetle that has the golden color to it. The Rainbow Stag may look slightly similar, but if you look at the Rainbow Stag, its legs are much longer and are striped. Golden Stag has none of these features. Here's the TLDR for those who need it. Now, we need to go over how to catch these beetles, as they are more sensitive to movement than others. You can't simply press A and walk up to these beetles willy-nilly. You'll scare them off. Instead, take a look at how they move. For stag beetles, watch the jaws and see how fast they clench and unclench. Press A and walk towards them, and if they freeze their jaws in place, stop moving. When they resume, keep going. Do this until you're close enough to the tree to successfully catch them. For horned beetles or regular beetles, it's different. They move up and down the tree. Similarly, if you move towards them and they stop moving, you should stop moving too. With this short method, you'll have everything you need in no time. Again, once you hit about 25 different catches, go ahead and use the customization kit you brought to restore all the durability to your net. Then, once you've filled up your 39 pocket spaces, go ahead and head out. Doing this will get you 312,000 bells minimum, 468,000 bells minimum if you sell them to Flick. At the time I'm uploading this video, it is about to be July, so Northern Hemisphere users, be sure to utilize this method as much as you can. Sturgeons are a type of fish exclusive to an area where a river meets the ocean. They appear from September to March in the Northern Hemisphere, otherwise March to September in the Southern Hemisphere. They're around all day and sell for a whopping 10,000 bells. This may be your best method yet for getting a ton of bells involving Mystery Islands. What you'll want in your inventory is a fishing rod, a customization kit, a ladder, a vaulting pole, and a Nook Miles ticket. So it doesn't require much this time. The best time to use this method is between October and March in the Northern Hemisphere, or in between April and September in the Southern Hemisphere. The reason September or March is being left out is because Salmon and King Salmon appear, as they are also exclusive to where the river meets the ocean. When searching for the right island, all you have to look for is any island with a river. This could be the regular island with a river, the sister fruit island, the spiral river island, the waterfall island, etc. If you run up on an island with a layout like this, however, you'll want to turn around and leave. All you can catch on this island is trash. Once you make it to an island with a river, start scaring away fish that appear nearby the waterfall base or above it. It'll open up much more room for a sturgeon to appear. Get rid of any other fish that spawn around there while you're clearing them out. Once you don't see any more fish near the waterfall base, wait about 5 to 10 seconds before checking out where the river meets the ocean. 9 times out of 10, you'll see the shadow of a huge fish. This is what you're looking for, the sturgeon. Make sure you use the method of closing your eyes and using sound to catch it, and make sure you have a quick reaction time.
Once you catch about 25 sturgeons, go ahead and use the customization kit on your fishing rod to reset the durability. Then, fill up the rest of your pockets with sturgeons. It's up to you if you want to drop your ladder or vaulting pole. In my experience, it took me about 45 minutes to fill up my pockets with 39 sturgeons. That's 390,000 bells. But, if you wait until CJ arrives, that'll be 585,000 bells. If you use this method a total of 10 times and sell the CJ each time, you'll have more than enough bells to pay off Tom Nook completely. If you have Nintendo Switch Online, you should definitely buy Daisy Mae's turnips on Sunday mornings. She'll be around from 5am to 12pm. If you don't have Nintendo Switch Online, you can still try your luck with your own stock market, but you'll have to be cautious. Daisy Mae will sell turnips for in between 90 to 110 bells on Sundays. For those without Nintendo Switch Online, your goal is to check out Nook's Cranny every day after Sunday to see if their price is anything above what you bought the turnips for. The price for turnips will change whether the hours are in the AM or PM. Make sure you log both and take a look at this turnip website, which tells you which pattern you're likely to get. It'll take a few days to be fully accurate though, so be patient. Definitely don't time travel, that spoils your turnips. There are four different patterns, the random pattern, the decreasing pattern, the small spike pattern, and the big spike pattern. In the random pattern, there will be random increases and decreases throughout the week. Some of those increases being a price bigger than the price you initially bought the turnips for. In the decreasing pattern, the sell price decreases several bells for each morning and afternoon that passes. In this case, you'll want to sell your turnips ASAP so you don't make too much of a loss. In the small spike pattern, your sell price will decrease until Tuesday night, then beginning Wednesday morning, it'll rise until by Thursday morning's hours, where the price will be around 200. That's where you want to sell the turnips. It'll fall down again from there. In the big spike pattern, it's similar to the small spike pattern. Your sell price will decrease until Tuesday night, but it will rise much more significantly starting Wednesday morning. By Thursday morning, you'll find that the price is increased anywhere between 200 and 700 bells per turnip, which is a perfect deal. Make sure to definitely sell your turnips here. Now, let's talk in terms of having Nintendo Switch Online. Luckily, you won't be having to pay much attention to the tournament prices on your island, mainly other people's islands instead. For this, you'll want to have Discord available. Join the official Animal Crossing New Horizons Discord, which is linked in the description. There are three channels dedicated to the stock market. Use the channel named hashtag turnips looking for if you want to advertise what turnip prices you're specifically looking for. LF means looking for, that's what turnip prices you're looking for. FT means what you're willing to trade in order to sell your turnips, and your best bet would definitely be Nook Miles tickets. Keep in mind, if you want higher chances of being able to sell your turnips, you'll need to be ready to raise your for trade a bit. Another channel is named hashtag turnip visits, specifically for users advertising their own island's turnip prices. Their LF, aka looking for, is what you'll have to bring in order to be able to utilize their prices. Again, most of the time, it'll be Nook Miles tickets, so make sure you have some Nook Miles saved up and ready to go. Finally, the last channel is named hashtag no fee turnip visits, where you can find users who won't charge anything when you come to their island to sell turnips. However, those messages are mixed with other messages about Daisy Mae being on someone's island for someone to visit. It's best to send your message in the first channel about your preferences, then keep an eye on the two other channels for good turnip prices. There aren't a whole lot of messages, so it'll be best to turn on notifications for those channels. It's also important to note that if you have high turnip prices at any point on your own island and you have Nintendo Switch Online, you should definitely advertise it so you can get Nook Miles tickets for the above methods. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry my voice was so low. I hope this video helped you in making bells. In the comments, if anyone finds another way to make a decent amount of money, feel free to leave it. I can't promise that I'll post a whole lot more content in the future, but feel free to subscribe if you'd like. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you with another video sometime in the future.